Hey, good day there. I'm so excited you're coming on this little journey with us in this mini series. We're going to be exploring the gifts and teachings of nature in the wintertime. And my hope is that this series is going to increase your knowledge of the natural world. It's going to deepen your relationship and your connection with the ecology and the habitat of where you live. Uh, it's going to increase your self-reliance and your survival skills a little bit. And I also hope it's a ton of fun. Now in today's video, we're going to dive deep into the realm of the birds and particularly how and what the birds are communicating. So I'm going to start off sharing with you a great story that's full of teachings around how the birds communicate and how we can actually interpret it and do something valuable with it. Now this story goes back about 10 years ago and I was teaching a wilderness survival course and a nature awareness course. So it's the very last morning of the course. It's about six in the morning and it's usually dead quiet. All the students are still teaching because we were up late or sorry, sleeping because we were up late. And up in the tree beside me, there's this little bird, and I'm not great with my bird calls, but bear with me here. It makes this call that goes something like this. So I'm sitting there drinking my coffee, and all of a sudden, off in the distance, I hear a different bird call, and it goes, sneak, 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 sneak. And then I see a robin go shooting like a jet plane, like really fast straight line underneath the tree where this other bird's singing. And then the bird up in that tree, it changes its call from doing the dee 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 to dee 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 and then it flies off. So I get up out of my chair and I kind of walk over to the edge of the porch and I'm kind of looking down the trail there and here's this guy from the course. He's all packed up, he's got his stuff in his backpack and he's just trudging along the trail. And I have this thought like, oh no, what's going on? Is something wrong? Does he have to leave early? I better go check on him. So imagine this, okay? I'm sitting there looking at him coming down the trail and I was alerted to that because of the change in the birds. So I let go of the porch, go to turn around, and there's my buddy, and he's got his hands up against the window, and he's like, hey, Chris, what are you looking at there? And I can only imagine that there's somebody else in the house that's sitting there doing dishes and being like, oh, wh what's that guy looking at out the window? So part one of this story is just how interesting it is that this ripple was created. So this guy walking down the trail at six in the morning, it caused the blue jay to go sneak, 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 which caused the robin to dart under that tree, which caused the uh, white-throated sparrow to switch from dee 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 to dee dee dee, which caused me to get up and look down the trail, which caused my friend to go like this to the window, which caused the guy doing dishes to say, hey, what are you doing over there? Or what are you looking at over there? So his movement literally trailed like a ripple all the way into the building. That's bird language. That's communication. And, and that's the kind of stuff we can start to learn to interpret and give meaning to as our awareness grows. But there's another part of this story that I find just as interesting. So I go to meet this guy out the front of the building and I'm like, hey, what's going on? I'm curious why you packed up so early. And this is really neat because he had almost no experience in the outdoors coming in. I shouldn't say no experience. He spent lots of time in the outdoors, but it was very recreational. He was completely new to this realm of awareness that we were bringing him into. But all week long, we had them doing these different activities to build that. So this is what he says to me to answer the question. He's like, well, Chris, I'm sitting in my tent this morning and I realize that the birds are sounding more frantic than they usually do in the morning at this time, every other morning this week. And based on what I learned this week, I suddenly had this thought, I wonder if it's going to rain and that's why they're frantic. I've got a long drive to go home and I live in an apartment right now and I've got nowhere to hang my tent if it gets wet, nor do I have time. I'm super busy when I get back. And I just had the thought, maybe I better just pack everything down right now and go put it in the car just in case it rains. And what's super rad is 20 minutes later, it starts to pour rain. So not only did the birds alert me that someone was moving down the trail, even though I didn't see or hear them, they alerted that person that the weather was about to change without having to look at a weather app or the weather station. That's the power of bird language and bird communication applied to the way that we interact with the natural world. So now it's time to dive into the activity for today. The reason that I was able to know that that person was walking down the trail is because I was aware of this concept that we call baseline. And baseline is the idea that uh, there's a normalcy to the patterns in nature. And the one we're referring to right now is the patterns of the birds. Now you can actually map this out on a grid or on a chart for your area. So the baseline is gonna change a little bit, you know, from season to season. It's gonna change a little bit from habitat to habitat, but there should be a basic baseline to the bird activity. So I'll give you an example here. In the springtime, we often have this thing we call the morning chorus. So right at dawn, there's this big explosion of bird activity and they're making a ton of noise. And then as they get onto like kind of feeding and doing their thing, it kind of dies off just a little bit. As the, core, as the day goes on, you know, it kind of moves on a straight line and then it basically plummets kind of late afternoon. It's the quietest time of day for the birds and in the forest. 
Then right before the sun goes down, there's usually another spike of activity and then it goes dead for the night. So I would call that grid kind of the baseline of the bird activity. Imagine what that bird activity would look at your bird feeder or in your local neighborhood. Heck, you could even do that with people activity or traffic for that matter. What's the baseline there? And the important concept here with baseline is that once you understand what the baseline is, you start to notice if there's a break in the baseline or something's not right. And that's when the exciting story comes on. So for that guy in the story, he noticed that normally the birds were singing in the morning, but today they're really frantic. And that alerted him that, oh, maybe the weather's gonna change. I could actually do something useful for that. Isn't that amazing? Like, I was completely oblivious to that kind of awareness most of my life until people started pointing it out to me. So I dive into those kinds of topics a lot deeper in some of my, uh, my other courses, but for this mini series, I'm gonna give you a little challenge that you can go and do either on your own or you could bring your kids with you or go on out and do it with a friend. So the first step is to try and find a little bit of time to get out into nature in the next little bit. And when I say nature, you know, this could be going for a walk down the block in your suburbs or even in the city for that matter. If you can get to a park, even better, but don't let that hold you back. Really, you just need to get outdoors somewhere where there's a chance of finding birds. So that's step number one. Now, when you go out for this walk, you know, if you've got only got five minutes, that's fine. If you've got 20 minutes or 60, it's even better. But I'm going to invite you to do this in a very particular kind of way. So step number one, as soon as you get into the outdoors, I want you to try and quiet your mind and let go of all of the busyness of the world. And I want you to use your senses as a way to do that. So you can feel, you know, the subtle breeze blowing across your face. If the sun's out, maybe stop there and feel. Can I actually tell which side of my face the sun is on and which isn't, you know? Um, maybe as I take a breath in through my nose, can you smell, is it humid or is it dry? So just really tune into all of your senses as a way to quiet down your mind. Once you feel like you've quieted and you're actually kind of present and in the moment and using all your senses, I invite you to go for a little wander and try and find a flock of birds that you can actually observe for a little bit. That's step number two. Step number three is once you find them, I'm gonna invite you to explore your curiosity a little bit and think about that concept of baseline and also think about that concept of communication. So birds have this really elaborate communication structure. And, you know, for example, if the birds all of a sudden spook and take off, was there one bird that alerted the others that did that? Or maybe the birds have spooked from, let's say, a bird feeder and then one comes back in. Does it make a little noise that then tells the other birds it's safe? See what kind of little subtle things you can start to pick up in their calls about how they're communicating with each other. And I'm going to do one more teaching right now that should actually help with that significantly. So we're going to listen to a couple of bird calls right now. Now this first one, have a listen to this. This call is what we call a contact call. So this is what birds, uh, this particular bird, it often flies in a flight pattern that has an undulation, a wave to it. And they'll do that call back and forth, kind of to keep track of each other and check in. So that's the companion call. Listen to it one more time. To me, it kind of sounds like it's saying, potato chip, potato chip chip, potato chip. So that's how I remember this one. Now listen to this call and just see how it feels different, even if you don't know who it is. Can you see how the cadence of this call or the intensity of it is just a little bit different? This is what we'd actually call an alarm call. And this is the bird warning of danger. So step number one, or sorry, the, not step number one, but the next step I'll just add, when you're watching those birds, see if you can start to pick up on some of those subtleties. Do you notice alarm calls? Like was there a particular call that was made before everything spooked? Or if somebody's walking down the street or a dog comes, does the call actually change when the dog comes? Do you notice companion calls where they're calling back and forth? So that's a really, really fun layer to add this activity. Now in the next video, we're gonna actually take up the answers to who those two birds are and talk about them a little bit more. And we're also gonna dive deep into uh, the gifts of the trees. Now, did you know that trees can actually tell you which way north is and how to find your way back home if you get lost? Or certain trees can in certain conditions, I could say. On top of that, trees, you know, they provide food and medicine, they provide warmth, uh, they provide us with oxygen, they provide so many gifts to the human world. But learning to ID trees can actually be really overwhelming when you're getting started. There's so many of them, they look really similar, and in the winter time it could be even harder. So I've got some great tips, and I'm even going to give you a scavenger hunt with some basic patterns to help you with your winter tree ID. So that's what we're going to dive into in the next video. Now stop right there. Before you turn off this video and head outside to do this activity, 
The power of community is absolutely amazing in collective learning, as well as just lifting our spirits during uh, challenging times. I run a bunch of cohort-based kind of learning communities around the outdoors and nature, and I learn just as much as the students inside of these when we bring ourselves together. So I'm going to invite you in this moment to connect with the community that's part of this mini-series in the comments. And I'll invite you to share two things. So first off, share something that you're feeling thankful for. I just find that's a great practice, especially during the long, cold, dark season uh, of winter when spirits can kind of get down a little bit. Second, I invite you to share a story about the birds. Maybe it's related to communication or an experience that you've had. Uh, maybe it's just your favorite bird to watch. Uh, maybe it's a question that you have around birds. So go down in the comments, share a story about the birds, share something you're feeling grateful for. Uh, of course, only if you feel up for doing that. And watch out for the next video where we're gonna dive deep into the realm of trees and I'm gonna share that free bonus scavenger hunt uh, on tree patterns. All right, everybody, happy tracking. Cheers.